It's a road to revival. Welcome to Road to Revival with Brad Keekler. Our mission is to revive the church, to help reach the lost here at home and around the world, to care for orphans and foster children who need shoes and God's love. Now let's join Brad as he brings revival to everyday life. It's a road to revival. Welcome to Road to Revival. My name is Brad Keekler. In this powerful message from John chapter 1, we will learn what it really means to be saved. There are many people who have had an encounter with God. Many people that because they've had this experience and said a salvation prayer, they think they're saved. But the Bible warns us to make sure we've received the word correctly. This teaching will show you what really should follow a true conversion. This is part one of a two-part series called, Are You Ready for Heaven? Enjoy. There was an ad that came out in 1981, actually a, a report in the Minnesota radio station. And they reported that a car got stolen. True story. And all the police were looking for that car. And the reason why they were looking for the car, spe specifically the thief, is because the owner of the car had left some crackers on the passenger seat. And those crackers were laced with rat poisoning. A whole lot of rat poisoning. True story. Because he was taking it home to give to the rats around his house to, to kill the rats. And the guy took the car. And here the guy is, he's running from the police. And the police aren't trying to arrest him at this time. They're trying to save him. And, and they're looking all over for him to find this man. And I'm here to tell you that God's the same way. That, that we have a poison, in, that, that a potential poison in our life. And it's called sin. And, and he's chasing after us, and we're trying to run away from God, you know. And God's saying, I'm just trying to help you. I'm just trying to, I'm trying to help you. I'm not trying to arrest you. I'm not trying to hurt your life. I'm trying to better your life. Someone say amen. And we think, oh, he's going he's gonna to change me so much. I, I, you know, I'm going to go from, from red to, to green, you know. But God's not trying to hurt you. He's trying to help you. Everything in the Bible is there to help us. And John the Baptist comes and he's preaching a message of repentance. That was his message. When you heard John the Baptist, every service would be like, repent, says the Lord. Every service. Why? Because that was his calling to call people to repentance, not to hurt them, but to help them. Because when you repent, you, you lay things down that you don't need in your life. Things that are actually bogging you down you think you need when you let those things go. That's when the freedom of the Lord comes. And that's when, the, that's when you, you see that God is, is, is greater in your life. Someone say amen. amen. I want you to turn your Bibles to John chapter 1. And it says this. And verse 10. He was in the world. Who's he? It's Jesus. And the world was made through him. Now, very important we stop again. Who created the world? The word. We learned that in John 1.1. 1, 1, that everything was made by a word. And that's why, as Pastor Miguel said, it's important for us to understand the power of our words. Because words can change your situation. You're only bound by your words. And so he says... That the world was made through him and the world did not know him. It's like having your children, and it doesn't it happen at the teenage years, you don't know them anymore? <laughs> Amen? And, and you, you had, he made the world and the world didn't even know him. Their creator. Their God. And then it says he came to his own and his own didn't even receive him. Jesus came to help. But the world rejected him. And then it says, But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become the children of God. 
Somebody ought to shout right now. He's given you the right to become the children of God. To those who believe in his name. Someone say, in his name. Verse 13. Who were born not of blood, nor of the will of flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Now, this is very important that you understand this. Many say, everyone in the world is God's children. The Bible does not declare that. Everyone is created by God, but not everyone is God's chi child. The people who are God's children are those who have received Him. Those who have received Him and believe in His name. So it's very important that we don't see everyone in the world as God's children. There is a movement out there that wants us to kind of believe that everyone is God's child. Whether you're homosexual, whether you're living in sin, whether you're an alcoholic, come on, brother, everyone has grace in their life. Certainly we're all uh, God's children. And you're right, everyone does have grace in their life. It's the grace of God to give you a life. It's the grace of God to give you 80 years and you deny Him. They didn't re receive Him. And that's the grace of God that allows you to live your lifestyle and do whatever you want to do. But it's not God's plan. And what God has, what He wants to, us to know is that, that those who receive Christ are His ch child. Praise the Lord that we have the right to become the child of God. The right to become the children of God. Not, 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 a, not a privilege now. He says it's a right. Oh, praise God. That means when, when the devil comes against me. Come on, somebody. I have a right to say, Daddy, I need some help because I'm a child of the King. Hallelujah. And no matter what comes against me, I can say, Oh, my God is for me. And if my God's for me, then who can be against me? Why can I say that? Because I have a right. I'm a child of God. I have received Jesus into my life. Someone shout amen. Amen. We're not automatically children of God. And, and, and there's much that, that John was dealing with there in that culture. He was dealing with all the, 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 the Jew, Jewish people who were born under Abraham and felt they had a right to become the child of God just because they were a certain race or a certain people or belonged to a certain uh, church or, or however you want to look at it. And so John says, we're not all children of God. Only those who receive him are the children of God. Very important. Now he says, who believe in his name, verse 12, to those who believe in his name. Now think about this. He doesn't say for those who believe on his name. He says for those who believe in in his name. Now there's a difference between on and in. I know it's so small, but it's like being on a rock when uh, bombs are going off. And you're on the rock. <sighs> Come on, somebody. Or you can be in the rock of a cave, in the rock, and when the bombs are going off, you are protected by the power and the Spirit of God because you're not on the rock, you're in the rock. And there are many people that are on the rock of Jesus. Brother, I'm on the rock. If you're on the rock, you can fall off the rock. But if you live in the rock of Jesus, if he's your source of your strength, come on somebody, if he's the place of your dwelling place, as David said, you can be in the rock and see God protect you from everything. And what God wants to say is, for those who have received him, John says, for those who have received him, he's given them the right to become the children of God. What a privilege and what a blessing it is to have the right to claim everything in the word of God for your life. Come on, somebody. As a child, you have a right now to, 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 to believe everything and to receive everything in the word of God. Amen? Amen? You receive his prosperity. You receive his forgiveness. 
You receive his love. You receive his wisdom. You have a right. You don't have to ask God, God, can you please give me this? God says, you're my son. You're my daughter. I'm here to help you. You have a right now to receive. Someone shout amen. amen. Compassion is very important. In fact, in Matthew 1 and verse 40, there was a leper who needed to be healed. And he said to Jesus, he said, if you are willing, uh, can you heal me? And Jesus said, I am willing. And he said that for the compassion for him, he reached out to him and touched him and he was healed that day. And I'm here in Haiti. And uh, Haiti has been devastated by an earthquake uh, two years ago. Uh, we are here today at an orphanage with these great kids. And uh, we're uh, letting them know of what compassion is. And that compassion is stepping out of our comfort zone and reaching out to people who, uh, who are in need and simply loving them. We can show compassion whether we go to Haiti or right there at our home, uh, right outside our doors. Show some compassion today. Tens of millions of kids around the world do not have shoes. As a result, they are suffering with soil transmitted diseases, which are caused by parasites entering through the bottom of the foot. Also, one out of every 13 children become orphans. And in America, 250,000 children enter the foster care system each year. At Samaritan Walk, we provide shoes to these precious children. Our shoes not only provide protection and care, but also open the door for us to share the love of Jesus Christ. You can help by becoming a partner for as little as $10 a month. Please go to our website at swalks.org. That's S-W-A-L-K-S dot O-R-G. And show some compassion today and join the Swax Shoes cause. Now there's a problem that he says in verse 13. He says, who were born not of blood. In other words, being a Jewish person under the Roots of Abraham doesn't make you a child of God. Being born of blood, um, Jesus' brothers. He, Jesus had brothers. Mary and Joseph had other children. They didn't automatically become children of God. They too had to believe, not that he was his, their brother, but he was the Messiah. And they had to receive him. I believe it was one of the brothers, James, uh, that received Jesus. His own brother received him as the Lord and, and, and his Savior. Are you with me this morning? Just because we're in a church or we, we, we're in a Christian nation doesn't make us all Christians. This is the message that God wants to tell his people that, that there are false converts in the house of the Lord. There are people that aren't even converted, that, that praise the Lord, that shout, but they're not, they're not saved. This is what John was dealing with. They were claiming that they knew the Lord, but they really hadn't been born again. They hadn't been converted. Someone say amen. amen. Not of blood or of the will of flesh. Now listen to me when I when, what John's trying to say. Different rabbis were out making converts or disciples, and they were convincing people, follow after me. Why do they do that? Because as a minister, you need income. It, it, I mean, some people think ministers are just live by faith. Oh, God, bring a steak right now. It, I have to make money just like you have to. Amen? And, and so all these rabbis were out there having followings. Same thing happens today. You've got T.D. Jake and his following. You have uh, Rod Parsley and his following. You have uh, Benny Hinn and his following. You have Joel Osteen and his following. And there's nothing wrong with that. That we have people that support the ministry that God has inside of us and, and people did it. That's what happened there. And so John says, listen, it's not by the will of men. It's not by us willing people into the kingdom. 
We can't will them in just because they're supporters and sponsors doesn't make them born again, converted, changed, radically delivered uh, people of God. Come on, somebody. And he says it's not by the will of man. And, 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 and boy, we've all been guilty of this. We say, how many here want to give their life to Christ? Raise your hand. And we all raise our hand. People come, oh, count them out. One, two, four, five, eight, ten. There were 12 people that gave their life to Jesus. Let's put it into statistics. Let's write it out. Or we see our children and any father or mother that doesn't want their child saved needs to be talking to because, you know, we want our children saved. And we, sometimes we use our will and impose our will on them in this sense. They, they say, yes, I've given my life to Jesus, but their lifestyle doesn't show it. And yet we still want to say they've been converted. But they haven't been converted yet. They, they, have, they have believed on his name, but they haven't believed in his name yet. And it's a difference in the body of Christ. And we have many people and churches where people, there's a core that have believed in his name and many are believing on his name and they're not totally converted yet. For me, it happened in a hotel room one, in one night. Radically converted. For, for my wife, it took her uh, many years for her to change. Before she knew me, she, she went through this process. It, it, the, the thing is, she got converted. So... You might be on a process. You might be on a process towards that. But that's okay. You've got to press in and make sure that you're converted by God. Amen? Amen. And he says it's not by the will of men. I, I have no idea. If you say the sinner's prayer, I don't know if you really gave your life to Jesus. That's what John's trying to say. It's not by the will of men. Just because you're following Gamaliel. Just because you're following Peter. Paul says, I baptize none because I don't want anyone to follow after Paul. I want them to follow after Jesus. Amen. And many people are following after a person or a, or, a, or a movement or this or that, and they're still not in the, in the Lord. They're not saved in Jesus. Someone shout amen. amen. And what, God, what, Paul, what, what John's saying is we've got to believe in his name. We can't will people into the kingdom of God. The Bible says that God the Father has to draw you in. I can't, I can't say a special prayer for you that you get saved. And the title of the message today is, Am I Really Saved? Am I Really Saved? I, I think we all need to ask that question. I don't know about you, sometimes I ask myself, Am I Really Saved? And you're like, you're the pastor. Yeah, I still need to make sure that I'm on with God. Amen? Amen. And once we think we've arrived, then we get too complacent. Yes. Amen? Who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man. we got to be careful that we don't just claim that our children are all okay because they were baptized or they, gave their, they supposedly gave, they had an experience with God and we say they're okay. We need to go beyond that and help them be truly converted by the Lord. Amen? Amen? And God will grace you in that, and he'll help you in that. And he won't, he's, you know, this, he's going to help you make sure that that happens. Because he says if you raise your children up in the ways of the Lord, they won't, they won't turn. But, but we think just because we said a prayer and felt some warm fuzzies and had some goosebumps, that somehow we're okay. And John's trying to get across to, to people that, 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 that it, that's not true. In fact, in the New Living Translation, verse 13, it says, They are reborn. Not with the physical, I'm sorry, not with a physical birth resulting from human passion or a plan, but a birth that comes from God. That's the conversion that he wants in our life. A conversion that came from God, not the will of men. Amen? Now, very important, what John's trying to say here is that there's two religious systems. There's God's religious system. And there's Satan's religious system. There's not all these religious systems. Jesus said it this way. He, he said, you're, if you're, actually Matthew 12, 30, he says, whoever is not with me is against me. And he says, whoever does not gather, gather with me scatters. Very important. It's not that you say, I'm with God. Are you gathering souls? 
Are you reaching out? That's a true sign of conversion, that you've really been converted by God. Ephesians 4.4 4 says, There is only one body, one spirit, just as there were one calling and one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and one Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. Now, how many faiths are there? There's one faith. There's one belief system. There's one religious system. There's not many types of disciples. There's one type of disciple. Amen? Amen. I mean, people might raise disciples up differently, but they're all Jesus' disciples that do what Jesus said, not what the church says. Not by the will of men. Oh, they've graduated. You're all disciples. No, Jesus has to make that determination. We can't make that determination. It's by the, that'd be the will of men. It's God that does. Someone say amen. amen. Now, Satan is very crafty, isn't he? He, he wants to deceive us. And in Revelation 12, 9, it says, And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceives the whole world. Now, don't you think that Satan can deceive people? That's what John is trying to get across, that, that, that it's not by the will of man, because Satan will deceive you to think you're saved when you're really not saved, yes. or really not converted. Yes. And then we believe we are, but we really haven't, Looked at the Word of God to see what somebody who's been truly converted, what they do when they're converted. Amen. I'm just trying to help you look at the Word. You can decide for yourself, but that we, have to, we have to look at this and say, am I really saved? Amen? Amen. In 2 Corinthians 11:13, it says this, that for such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Jesus Christ. In other words, they're going out in Jesus' name, but they're not really teaching Jesus' commandments. Aren't there a lot, of, lot, lot of places in the world today that do that? That we, we don't hear really about conversion, that we really need to be converted? Now watch this. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Just like an apostle can become like an apostle, but he really isn't, Satan can become like an angel of light. He can deceive you. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers are also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness. We need to be transformed into the ministers of righteousness. Someone say, I'm a minister. I'm a minister. We, have to be we have to be transformed into the ministers of righteousness. Amen? Amen? Whose end shall be according to their works. Now, some people say, brother, I'm under grace. Don't, 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 you know, don't, don't judge me. Well, God says that the end will be, will be also looked at our works of whether those works were done for Christ or not for Christ. So we want to just say, you know, we're under grace, we're not under works. But, but Paul says, I'll, I'll show you, uh, you can show me your grace or faith, I'll show you my works that prove my faith. So when, I, when I'm working for God, I'm not, I'm not working for God to be saved, but I'm saved so my, my salvation forces me to want to work for God. And then my works prove that I actually was converted by God. Someone say amen. amen. So Satan is very crafty. And even the children of Israel through the wilderness, they had a mixed multitude with them. They had a lot of people that were in mixed multitude. They weren't truly saved. They, they, they were not converted by God, and they went through the wilderness. They all died off before they got to the promised land, and only those who were really converted went into the promised land. You know the story, right? We're all mature enough here to understand that story. Why did they die off? Because they weren't truly converted yet. Amen? Now, thank God for, for God. Amen? Because I need grace to, to get to that place, but it's the Father who has to call you in. It's not, a, it's not a sinner's prayer. It's not, those help. Don't get me wrong. That, you can have a sinner's prayer, and, and that's a beginning point. But there's more to being saved or converted than just, you know, accepting a, a, a salvation um, message. Now, listen. It says this in Mark 4.13. Not by the will of men. Remember, we're on, we're on John chapter 1, verse 10 through 12. I'm just kind of giving some background here. 
Mark 4, 13. Now listen, this is very important. It says, and he said to them, do you not understand this parable? What parable? Well, we're going to read it in just a minute. Now watch what he says. How then will you understand all the parables? He didn't say that on any of the other parables, but he said it on this one. If you don't understand this one, how can you understand any of the others? There were other times that they came and they said, we don't understand what you're saying. And he would explain it to them. But here, out of all the other times, he says, if you don't understand this parable, there's no way you're going to understand the mysteries of God, the parables of God, the word of God. Amen. Amen? So this one is very important for us. Why is it important? Because it deals with our true conversion that we totally have been changed and transformed by God. Because you can't discern the will of God without the Spirit of God. You can't read the Word and understand the Word the way God wants it without the Holy Spirit showing you what it says because the Holy Spirit's our teacher. My wife Carolyn and I have dedicated our lives to see the unsaved come to know Christ. We want all to become children of God. But God tells us that only those who have received Christ and who are in Christ have the right to be called the child of God. Today, I want to give you that opportunity to receive Jesus Christ into your life as Lord and Savior. Say this prayer. Say, Lord Jesus, come into my life. I believe you are God. You are the way, the truth, and the life, and the only way to heaven. Come into my life and save me. I turn from my sins, and I turn to you. In Jesus' name, amen. If you just received Christ into your life, I want to be the first to welcome you into the family of God. It is very important that you take the next step. Go to our website and download the free salvation pack. It will help you get started on your new journey. Road to Revival is a ministry of Samaritan Walk International. We help foster revival in America and around the world through revival meetings, training, events, and more. We also care for orphans and foster kids. That's our heart, to provide shoes for them, our shoes, as they suffer with soil-transmitted diseases. Please visit our website at swax.org and consider becoming a Revival Partner for $10 a month. God bless you. We'll it's see you next road time. To revival. Thank you for watching Road to Revival. We are a listener-supported program. We are currently seeking support. Please consider becoming a Revival Partner today for as little as $10 a month. Please tune in next week for Road to Revival. Thank you for watching. It's a revival. It's a revival. It's a revival. It's a revival. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I love your word. I love you, Jesus.